Man, you have a problem with the comments? I do. I do. Be and this is when you get yourself in trouble. You're just off the Travis Kelsey conversation. At least he's owning it. I got to play better. Yeah. Right? If I'm a Super Bowl guy, I got to act like a Super Bowl guy. Right. And I respect that, right? He's always blaming everybody else. It's never his fault. Right, he's talking about effort. He makes the point of saying, can't just be one guy or two guys showing effort. Everyone's got to show effort. That's a fundamental problem with this Dallas Cowboy team. That it seems like whenever things go south, Mike could kind of distance him himself from why it went south because it's never his fault. So the defense has been bad against good teams. They have feasted on really bad teams, and they play like a, play better when they have a lead and all that. But So this is since the start of the 2023 season. I showed you guys these stats yesterday. It's like, okay, what happens when Dallas plays good teams? Those numbers are atrocious, and that is, of course, across the board. But to your point, Craig, today we're like, let's look at what Micah Parsons does yeah. when they play good teams and bad teams. So games that they're blowing the other team out, they win by 10 or more, double-digit sacks, crushing the quarterback, making plays in the backfield. In the close games or the, the games that they trail in, right. he doesn't show up as much. And you say, okay, well, if you're if you're losing, you're not teeing off on an opposing quarterback, fewer pure pass rush situations right. and all that. Sure. But that is pretty stark that when they're blowing a team out, the bad teams that they play, Micah Parsons is feasting. In the close games, the games against the good teams, he is – more average, still an impact player. And listen, I think he's one of the three best defensive players. Sure. I would agree I, with I that. I think it's him, TJ Watt, and Miles Garrett in some order. He's an excellent football player, but the numbers do dip when they're not blowing Here, teams out. Here's what I don't want to hear from a guy or a teammate when they stand at the podium. I don't want to hear a guy sound like a French waiter. We, 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 we. Got it. I want a guy to take responsibility and go, I. I don't know. I have to. Cool. I have to. Yes, I have. Yeah, very much. Uh, yeah, French dressing. French fries. <laughs> yeah. I got them all. Um, I want to hear a guy stand up and say, I've got to be better. What kind of I've toast got do you like? I like French toast. I, guess yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. I see what you did. But I want a guy to stand up and say, hey, this is on me. Now, what he's saying is fundamentally true. Like, yeah. they need to play better as a whole. But I don't want a guy standing up saying, you know what? I'll admit it. It's their fault. I want him to come up and say, we have to, or I have to lead my team. I have to show the kind of effort, you know, even if he is. And let me just show you something. Yeah, go ahead. Because this was, this was startling to me. That's Cesar Ruiz, right? He's about 320 pounds. And when we talk about effort, look at my man run, and those are DBs. He's outrunning the DBs. Now, I know that's a touchdown, guys. But you can't let a 320-pound offensive lineman run faster than you when you're a 190-pound defensive back. I am sorry. Speaking of which, absolute unit. Absolute <laughs> unit. Oh, man, I just got excited. Anyhow. Yeah, yeah he's really fast. <laughs> but, yeah, but the bottom, big guy. But the bottom line is, is this, is he is correct, but I don't agree with the delivery. You have to stand in front of the podium and accept 100% of the Yeah, right. 100% of the responsibility. And look, it's not just that. He, he blames his teammates. That's uh, effort. And he's blaming the coaching staff. He talks about technique. Because the coaching staff, in theory, they're telling you where you're going to play. And the whole build-up to the season was, oh, we got Zimmer in here now. You know, new, new way of doing a defense. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take advantage of what Mike has got. Mm. He's going to be a defensive end. He's going to be a linebacker. He might be a safety. It's the same crap. It's the same Dallas Cowboys. You're right. When they play bad teams, they dominate them. Yeah. When they play good teams, they stink. I can't wait to see if this is a low-scoring game or a high-scoring game because it feels like it should be a high-scoring game. feels like Baltimore should be able to run all over Dallas, and Baltimore's defense, we've seen, has not played up to the level that we thought they were going to be. Yeah. And they've lost some guys. You mentioned Queen earlier. Yeah. So it feels like this is a game where you're going to need 30 points or more to win. So I'm not sure that I think that Micah Parsons is going to turn this defense around this week. i tell you the other thing. It, while it's more of a must-win game, I think we agree, uh, for Baltimore than Dallas, just based on it has to be. where we're at, right? They're always yeah. 2 v one right. of course. You know, we know what Dallas does in big games. They collapse. They don't play well. Yeah. This is a big game. Huge game. This is almost like a playoff game. Now, they can survive one and two, schedule-wise yeah. and NFC East-wise. We all agree Baltimore probably doesn't survive 0-3. Oh, yeah. But this has the makings of a playoff atmosphere, meaning I like Baltimore. Right. No, I, I 100%. They are the definition. If we, if we talk about 
front running teams. Yep. They're the definition of front runners. Dallas. They yeah, they beat up on the they beat up on the little guys, they beat up on the bad teams, and when they face a good team, they crumble. Yeah. I mean, that's the definition. And by the way, it's the over under is 48 and a half. There's yeah. an expectation of, of a high scoring score. game. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're dead right about that. And then if it came down to, let's say, close game, you know, 24 all fourth quarter, then it gets interesting because I don't trust the Ravens defense, right. obviously. Right. And I'm not sure if I trust Dallas to make a big play yeah. to win a game in the fourth yeah. quarter either. Hey there, thank you so much for watching Breakfast Ball. You know, you can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from our show. And hey, while you're at it, make sure to check out all the amazing content from all the other shows also right here on FS1.